Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, doing a quick off-the-cuff review here of the new Cashmere Cat Record 9, a Cashmere Cat producer, whose music has usually been pretty, uh, I don't know, wonky, very low-key, haven't really been huge on it in the past because there hasn't been, you know, I guess a great amount of passion it's stirred up within me. Um, you know, sort of just being very laid back sort of seems to be the goal in his music. That's not necessarily something that um, sort of gets me chasing after an album, but you know, I see the appeal. Uh, however, it seems like there's been a big change of pace on this latest record over here. Not in the amount of excitement that goes into a Cashmere Cat record. This album still seems very low key. Uh, however, I think he's taking a really experimental approach to a lot of different styles of contemporary popular music right now. You know, whether that be uh, electronic dance music or just kind of your general top 40 flavored pop, uh, alternative R&B. Uh, there's actually like a touch of that kind of PC music, bubblegum bass sound that's really popular right now. Uh, and I think the results are pretty cool. I mean, there is something about this record that kind of reminds me of Drake's More Life in that each song really kind of feels like a motif. Like, it's pop music that doesn't necessarily pop. Like, there's not a strong presence of a, of a hook on some of these tracks. Uh, a lot of the songs seem to sort of follow a bit more of a linear structure. Uh, maybe there's a climax at one point at the song or at the end of the song or... Um, uh, and, and when there is a hook on here, like the song with Selena Gomez, it's it's god-awful. It's terrible. So, you know, I, I guess I <clears throat> more like the idea on this album of Cashmere Cat playing with these pop sounds, but doing something sort of amorphous with it, something that's very laid back, something that's very beautiful uh, a lot of the time, especially with the, vo the vocal layering uh, on this record, uh, especially with some of the synth parts on this record. Uh, there's actually a song called Victoria where there's actually this uh, really tight and intense EDM style <laughs> buildup. But then when the drop should come through, it's just like, you know, really subtle, very easygoing bass line and it sort of trails off into something else. It's like he's doing everything that he can to not like make a banger on this record. So, you know, it's very intentional that this album be a very laid back experience. He even sort of tricks you into thinking it's gonna do something that it's not at some points. Um, again, it is a very pretty record. I do think, uh, you know, sonically and, uh, and the way he arranges, again, some of these vocals and synth parts is very pretty too. Um, I guess I just wish it was more well-groomed. I mean, he certainly has the sonic palette to come together with a quality pop record. And looking at some of the vocal guests on this thing, uh, you would probably go into this record assuming that, whoa, he's like totally turned a new leaf and now he's gonna come through with his mainstream project over here. But this is that's still very much not the case on this thing. It's still very alternative. It's still very left field. It's still very kind of dodgy. It's trying to do something a little weird with these pop sounds. It may sound like a pop record, but structurally and conceptually, he's doing something really different. It's kind of like he's ripping pop music apart and restructuring it kind of in his own image or sort of uh, in, in a sculpture that he feels is uh, more reflective of kind of what he's shooting for artistically. Uh, he's not just kind of doing pop by the numbers over here. Uh, in that respect, I do think what this album is doing is, is really interesting, is really creative, uh, is definitely left field. But uh, there are some moments where he does kind of fly too close to that pop light and the result is that you're just hearing an awful hook. You're hearing a weak pop song. Um, meanwhile though, I do kind of wish that he was making that full step either toward making better pop music, more quality pop music, or just doing something else that was just a bit more eventful. Uh, because while I do like that he's doing something experimental and unexpected with these sounds, I wish that there was just more engaging material on here because there are too many tracks that just kind of feel like, you know, they're just merely meant to take up time until the next song comes in. And that's what kind of reminds me again of Drake's uh, More Life playlist album. Uh, it's kind of like each track is just kind of meant to fill the space in the background and all the songs kind of segue into each other and no track has like a really strong demanding sound or personality to it so that you could just kind of breezily listen to the old, the, you could breezily listen to the whole thing and it feels like one uniform experience. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. I thought it was decent. Uh, definitely my, uh, I guess definitely the most entertained I've come away from a Cashmere Cat album. Uh, I, am I expecting him to go further down this road or make any major alterations to this sound in the future? I don't really know. Um, but uh, you know, all I know is that uh, uh, right now I am curious as to where he will go next for sure. And uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. 
Thank you for watching, and uh, hope you dug on this album. Let me know what you thought of it down in the description, and uh, I will catch you guys in the next video forever.